Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown. In today's video, we are going to review the 2020 Dell G5 Special Edition with the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H 8 core CPU and Radeon RX 5600M graphics. 16GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM running in dual channel, 1TB of NVMe storage, and a 144Hz display that costs $1300. The base model starts at $880 and gets you the 6 core 4600H CPU. And from what I have read in my comments, that one runs cooler than the 8 core. Now, if you don't mind paying the extra $30 for a 4 zone RGB keyboard, you will have a red one like mine. Now, personally, I think Dell is penny pinching here and the RGB keyboard should be standard. Now, I'm not a great fan of how it looks, to be honest. The design is rather dated and it is rather cheap looking. It has an all plastic build and its lid has a silver metallic look to it with a reflective Dell logo in the center. It's a subdued look and will fit into most settings however. The keyboard deck is black plastic and it does show a few smudges. The large precision trackpad was very good. If you don't have the RGB keyboard, the keycaps will be red and of course all models have a separate number pad. Key spacing is decent but I found the keys to be on the small side. Now one thing I liked was the easy control of the high performance mode by pressing the F7 key. Now this boosts up the system power from 105 watts in balance mode to 116 watts, as well as activating the max fan, which goes from 50 decibels to 52 decibels under load. This extra power would typically get you an extra three to four FPS extra, but in all honesty, even in balance mode, the G5 would generally run hot, often reaching 100 degrees Celsius. Now some games would run cooler than others, and I suspect this has a lot to do with the new AMD Smart Shift that balances power between the CPU and the GPU as it sees fit. Now competing laptops with the same 4800H CPU would boost to at least 4000 MHz, whilst the G5 will adjust its power and clock rate to give more oomph to the 5600M graphics card. Now I found if the clock rate dropped below its base clock of 2900 MHz, it would generally run cool. So you may already be aware that you can tweak the registry in the Ryzen laptops to disable the turbo boost. To do that, go into uh, the search bar, type in the uh, regedit and click on the registry editor. And then you uh, want to go to the H key uh, local machine and then go down to system. Then uh, go down to current control set, then control and then you've got to look for power. It's down the bottom here. You click on power and then uh, the power settings. Open that up. Then you're looking for 54533251. Open that. And then you're looking for BE337238. There you go. Click on that. Open that, and then go into the attributes, right click on that, and then uh, click modify, and change that one to uh, value to a number two, and click OK. Okay, then you can close that down, and then, then open up the power settings. Now I've got this here in uh, the high performance mode, because I want to see what it's like when you press the G key. So just uh, go in your advanced power settings there, and then you'll have uh, in the processor power management, you've got the, the boost mode. Default is aggressive. Uh, so here, you know, you can switch it to disabled to uh, to disable it all together. Here is footage of Star Wars Battlefront 2 DX11 Ultra settings. At the top, I have regular balance mode. In the center, I have high performance with the turbo mode disabled. And at the bottom, we have balance mode with the turbo mode set at uh, efficient rather than disabled. With the CPU capped at 2900 MHz, it certainly was cooler, even though it was still in the low 90s. What I did find though, was that I was getting an improved frame rate. Balance mode increased from 96 uh, FPS to 100, and high performance from 100 to 108 FPS, so this looks like a great solution. One thing I did notice was when I tried to capture footage via my capture card, via HDMI, in other words, with the video signal outputted to an external display, I would often get to cooler temperatures. The HDMI is directly connected to the dedicated GPU. So some thought perhaps the lack of integrated Vega graphics may be cooling things down. On the left, the power connector is right at the back and you have three video out ports. You have a mini display port, an HDMI 
and a USB-C with DisplayPort. So in theory, you can connect to three different monitors, which would be handy for those playing simulator games or live streaming. Now note that you cannot charge the laptop via the USB-C port. You have a total of three USB Type-A ports, and for content creators, it's good to see a full SD card slot. And unlike many of the displays on these Ryzen laptops, the display on the G5 is pretty decent. Now, according to PanelLook.com, the BOE panel has a grey to grey response time of 9 milliseconds, which is, a, which is a refreshing change from the 40 milliseconds or so we see on the G14 or the Tough A15. Ghosting is also as good as other 144Hz panels, so for gaming, it is good. It also has a decent colour gamut covering 95% of sRGB, 70% of Adobe RGB, and 70% of the DCI P3 colour space. Now, the only thing letting it down was its below average brightness of 260 nits at 100% and 65 nits at 50%. Now, even though it has an anti glare coating, it isn't suitable under direct lighting conditions. Perhaps its worst issue is the amount of PWM flicker the display has even at 100% brightness when on battery. Now, some people may find that this leads to eye strain. As for backlight bleed, it wasn't too bad, there's just a little bit at the bottom right hand corner. Now when you first get the laptop, you may find that the FreeSync is not enabled in the Radeon software. And on June the 9th, AMD released a new driver that enabled this, and I have the link for that in the description below. Now if you find that it still doesn't work, you can use custom resolution utility to enable it. And a shout out to a viewer called Dex Ronin for pointing me to it. Download CRU from the link I have in the description and run it. And at the bottom, click on add, and then click on add again. Check the FreeSync range option on the right hand side and enter the desired range. Now competing laptops have 48Hz to 144Hz, so that is what I used. Click OK, and then you need to restart the driver by clicking on restart64.exe. Now the screen will flash, and when you go back into the Radeon software, FreeSync will be enabled. To test how effective it was, I used Overwatch as that is a fast paced game, and took a photo with a high shutter speed. You will notice when there is no FreeSync, you will see tearing as shown at the top, and in the center is using the AMD Enhanced Sync option, and at the bottom is using the FreeSync. To be honest, I couldn't really tell the difference between Enhanced Sync, which is supposed to reduce input lag, and FreeSync. The plastic bottom cover is downright ugly in my opinion. It's a browny gray color. I would have much preferred an all black design to be honest, but at least Dell does not block off the fan air intakes. Now here's the strange part. Currently, the only battery option is a 51 watt hour one, which got me about 4 hours 20 minutes watching YouTube at 40% brightness. Later, they will release a 68 watt hour one, and one would assume that it would fill this space marked as a 7mm hard drive. The problem is though, there is no SATA connector to even attach the hard drive, not even hidden underneath the occupied M.2 slot. I tried the connector just above the battery, and it didn't work. It's good to see a second M.2 slot though, and also the killer 1650X Wi-Fi card which ran great for me. It is also good to see that even with the base configuration, you will get dual channel RAM. Here is the GPU, and the CPU is here, with two shared heat pipes and one extra one for the GPU. Now the fans are fairly large, but due to the central hinge design, the rear heat sinks are very short. I find that the chassis did get quite warm. But not so much pops on the keyboard, but underneath it certainly did. And even at idle, it would feel particularly hot, especially if you're wearing shorts. And looking at the air exhaust, there's actually not much hot air coming out, and this is with the max fan going. I think this is why the system runs hot. It's just not pushing out hot air well enough. Using the Alienware Control Center software, you can either let the fan run automatically, or you can apply an offset percentage, so you know if you want to run at 80%, for example, or you can create your own fan curve. But unfortunately, this is totally meaningless if MaxFan cannot cool the system. I found the downfiring speakers to be slightly above average in terms of volume, and even bass was okay. But my main issue was that in some games, I would often get audio that sounded very muffled. So much so, that I would not sell this laptop and it's being returned to Dell. For anyone wanting to do Zoom meetings or even streaming, the webcam is located at the top of the screen and it is quite serviceable. So we've got a 720p webcam and I do quite like it, it seems okay. The microphone is fairly clear as well. And I think it does a good job of, you know, cutting out the periphery sounds, like I've got the air conditioner going on in the background. And this is what it's like when you're typing. And let's turn on the, on the Max fan. There you go. 
I did do a separate video comparing how the G5 compared to the GTX 1660 Ti in the tough A15 and the RTX 2060 Max-Q in the G14. So make sure you watch that for more details. But suffice it to say, it generally performs slightly worse than those systems. This was benchmarked at stock, so the Turbo Boost tweak was not enabled. I just let SmartShift do its job. On average, it was about 4% behind, but I do feel that as the drivers and smart shift matures, this gap will close and perhaps even surpass them because AMD are adamant that the 5600M should be on par with the full-powered RTX 2060. To see how it handled uh, video editing, I tried it on Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Magix. Now, the only one it seemed to struggle with is the DaVinci Resolve in the timeline where playback was rather choppy. And as far as rendering times are concerned, it actually split the Tough A15 and the Asus G14. And if you choose to use the 5600M to accelerate it, you know, expect to do it 50% faster. As for general CPU performance, it was near the top of the pack in most things. Generally getting beat by the Asus Tough A15, which has the same CPU, but on the whole, I was pleased with the CPU performance. How would I sum up the Dell G5 Special Edition? Well, I did like the CPU performance. It is fast and is much better than the i9 9880H and probably faster than most i7 10875H CPUs from Intel. I also like the webcam, the keyboard and its trackpad. Now, if you're okay with how it looks and including the uh, crazy large 240 watt power brick that comes with it, I'd recommend waiting. Since the AMD Smart Shift is new, and I suspect the uh, drivers for the 5600M will get better as, uh, as time goes by, you might as well wait until until July, I think. That's when they will launch the Ryzen 9 4900H model, and I suspect the larger battery model, a 68 watt hour battery, which should last you over five and a half hours. Now, if you found my video useful, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the additional AMD laptop footage that's coming shortly. Thanks for watching. Bye now.